Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel and this amazing video, I'm Aditya. In this video, we will explore about React Context API using TypeScript. So without any further ado, let's begin. Okay, so what are we gonna do? Now, we'll first create a context which would be very similar or try to simulate something like user authentication because most of the time in your app, you might wanna see the state of a user, whether it's login or not, and get the user details. And then from the user, you might need to pass it those details to several components. So for that basis, there are two ways to do it. One is to use something like Redux Toolkit or some state management system in React. The other way is to use contexts. So what I'm going to do is inside this, uh, so this is a basic React project with TypeScript and Vue. So inside this context folder, I'm going to create context. Okay. And that context will be passed or will be brought in inside this app component. And we will try to share data between components or that context between the components and see the change in one component reflects in the other one. So what I'm going to do is inside the context, let's create a file. Now I'm going to call this user context dot TS because it's TypeScript. I'm purposely naming it as TS because you'll see what happens when we name it as TS. Okay. Now here, first we need to import certain things. So here I'm going to say import. We need to create context and that will come from react. And next here we will create the user context. Okay. But before that we need to define the type for our value or the state that we are going to like share through this context. Now I'm going to share the user details. So for uh, like simplicity, I'm going to keep it an object with name and email. So here we will say type user and let's export this type because we might need to use it some in some other component for some typing. So here I'm going to say, okay, the user will have name that's going to be of type string and the user will have email that's going to be type string as well. Perfect. Now next we need to create the type of our context. Now what our context is going to pass. So our context is going to pass the state that is the user and a state function or a use state function to set the user details. Because what we want is whether we are in, let's say navbar component or some other component, let's say cart or whatever, we want to make sure that the user details changed in one location or in one components are reflected into the other component. For that, we need to make this user as a use state value. So for that, we will need to get use state as well. We'll get it for now. But before that, we need to define the state of our context, okay, or a type of our context. So here I'm going to say this, this type also I will uh, export it. Or actually, let's create it as an interface so that we can extend it if we want to extend it with some other interfaces. So let's create it as an interface. So here I'm going to say user context interface. Now, What's going to be inside this interface? Uh, it doesn't ex extend anything. It's going to be simple. Yeah. So inside this, there will be user, which will be of type user. So that's our user. And there will be a function, which is going to be, you could say, a use state function to set the user. Now, there are two ways to define this. One way is what is shown by copilot where we have user function, which is which like takes the uh, user as a parameter, which is of type user and returns a nothing like it's a void function. The other way, or you could say more authentic TypeScript kind of way in React is using React type itself. So when we define a use state function, React has specific types for that set function. So let me show you an example. Let's say we have a fun component here, let's say user provider, this we will be creating soon. So we will just put it over here for now. And here, let's say inside this user provided when we have, let's say something like this. So if I go over here, you'll see there is a type provided to this set user function. Okay. So what I'm going to do is we'll just come in this for now. We will need it for later. But so that type, this type that is being for that set user, we can assign it to our context interface as well, or the user uh, set user function in our context interface. So I'm going to say set user. This is going to be, oops, it should be user. This is going to be of type dispatch. That's going to come from React. So let's get that dispatch. And this dispatch extends the type of action. There we go. 
so that will also come from react and this again extends the user type so what we are saying is okay this set user is going to be a use state function which accepts or takes in the value of user which is going to be of type user over here and then set the user for us or set the user details for us okay now once we have our interfaces defined the next thing we need to do is create the context so here i'm going to say export const user context and then we will call the create context function from react so we'll say create context now what's going to be our context like what's going to be the base type of our code of our context so that's going to be this one because that's our interface so we'll say our create context is of type user context interface and we will need to give the initial value of our context so we will need to give the initial value for the user and for the set user now most of the time you don't know the initial value because your user may not be defined or sometimes you don't have the initial value so in that case the trick is to use partial here which is the type scripting and then in that in this case you don't need you just need to provide an empty object and that's it so you don't need to provide any more details okay so that's one way to do it but if you want strict typing or if you know what your user is going to be or like if you know like this user will be blank by default or something like that like if you know the value of your context before and in other words then you can create something like this here so i'll say user this is going to be something like name will be blank first email will be blank and then we will have the set user function okay the set user function will be just a function which returns nothing but it takes in the user and sets the user value okay so here you'll see it will throw an error it says assign not like not assigned to this and that whatnot so what we need to do is to make it very simple we'll extract it in a default state so let's put it in a default state over here i'm going to say const default state or default context you could say now this we will just paste it over here and what we are going to do is we will say okay this default oops default state is of type user context interface and from here we can remove this because if we put it over here and pass this default state over here that actually satisfies and makes this thing as a type of user context interface as you could see vs code is showing us the type so this is actually more easy way and here you have a default state and you just pass the default state now we got the context now we need to send the context provider so that it could be consumed okay now let's create a component which is user provider and let's give it some props type so here i'm going to say user provider props it's just going to accept children so this is going to be type children which is come going to come from react dot react node so here we could say react node and let's remove this react from here perfect now next thing is create a user provider component and then pass it to the app so this is going to be export function user provider and or let's make it a default function so that we can just we don't need to worry about the uh, named import and export so just make it as a default export first we will have the state value so that's going to be user and set user if we don't take it as a use state then the change won't be reflected even if you change it in any other components so you just need to make sure that this is a reactive value and then here we'll pass the user context provider now here i'm going to say it accepts children which is going to be this react node and this satisfy the user provider this props over here so let's pass it over here like this perfect now here it will say children okay it's d children over there so that's sorted now here you'll see it shows an error cannot find namespace user context the reason being we are writing jsx and we have named it here dot ts so we need to rename this file as dot tsx and then the error will go and then we have another error to solve which is this one so it says user undefined is not assignable to type user and here it says set user undefined is not assignable to type something something so to solve this you here give the name will be blank just some initial value and that's it now that removes all the error 
and confirms like our context is ready to use. Now let's go inside app.tsx and let's create here two components. Not necessary you have to create in the same file, you can create in different files as well. But for simplicity, let's create one component. So that's going to be user details component where we'll be showing the user details. And the other component will be some random component that will trigger the change in user details. Okay. So let's re uh, have those user details here. So we will say return. Now let's use fragment so that we don't have to use extra div or something. Here I'm going to say p tag. Then there will be some username, username, and then we will have the name of the user and user email, and they will have name of email of the user. Well, this component just triggers the change. So here I'm just going to say some random component. So just go with copilot, some other component or so just some random component to trigger the change. Perfect. Now, how we can activate our context? So what we need to do is we have the provider over here. So we first import the provider. So let's say import user provider from context, user context. And then we need to wrap all the components that should have access to this context. Now let's say all the, your entire app needs access to this user or you don't know where it will need access. So for that, let's wrap the app component itself with user provider. So user provider. And then here we will have our other components, which is this user details and another component. So user details and another component. Now, if you don't wrap it with a provider, then these two components won't have access to the context or they won't be able to trigger any change to the context. So definitely like this is a very important step. You need to wrap it with a provider and that provider is nothing but our component, which is nothing but user context.provider. Now here we are passing the prop that is user value, sorry, set user and set user. Now what we can do is inside another component, let's getting those, let's get those values. So here I'm going to say const user set user that will come from user context. Now use context is a hook from react. So let's get the hook and user context is going to come from our context. Okay. So user set user, let's use here some use effect so that we can trigger the change as soon as component mounts. So let's import that first. And here, what I'm going to say is, I'm going to say, okay, as soon as the component mounts, so just run once, just set the user with the details I'm passing. So this could be your API call or somewhere you need to, let's say you already authenticated the user and then you stored it in the local storage if it's a client side rendered app or you stored it somewhere and you just need to get the user details. So we are assuming that is happening in this function and here we are setting the user details. So I'm going to say name going to be Aditya and email going to be random email like just for simplicity example.com. Perfect. Now next thing is we need to show these details over here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is same drill. I'm going to get the user here, const user, and that's going to come from use context, user context. Okay. Now this user context we have created over here and this user context will link to our provider. So this provider will pass all the details, which is user and set user through the value to the consumer. That will be the children. And now we can consume those things inside the children. So we have the user context and now we could say, okay, the name will be user.name and the email will be user.email. If you notice, things are blank over here. So when we render this, change is triggered in one component and shown in the other component. So let's see if it works. So let's run this. There we go. So we have some other component here and changed what's triggered in the other component and it's reflected in the user details component. So that's how you could use react context to share states between components. So that's all in this video. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you feel this video is worth sharing with your network, please do share with your network. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe to my channel. So see you in the next video. Till the next time. Goodbye.